Let's say we have a radio signal, so we have a transmitter that sends out a radio signal and the radio signal is received by a radio receiver. Now this is great, right? We've transferred a radio signal successfully, but we can't do a whole lot with this, uh, except for saying that we've sent a radio signal. But what we want to do is also be able to transfer information with this. So if it's radio, we want to be able to transfer the music or the people talking to the other side. If, if this is Wi-Fi or something like that, some wireless communication for computers, we want to be able to transfer the, the binary digits, the zeros and ones, to the other side. So we want to somehow use this radio signal to get information across. And this is where modulation comes in. So modulation is a technique where you somehow encode data or information into a carrier signal. And there are a couple of ways of doing that. A radio signal has three main properties, which are the amplitude of the signal, so how strong it is, the uh, frequency of the signal, so how many waves per second, essentially, how short the waves are, and then also the phase of a signal. So this is the timing. Those are the three main properties of a, an, a radio signal. And by adjusting these properties, we can do modulation. By adjusting these properties, we can put information in there. So a very common type of modulation, which is the first type we discuss in this video, is amplitude modulation. So what amplitude modulation does is adjusting the amplitude of a specific radio signal in order to get the information across. So you have your carrier wave, your radio signal, and then, for example, an audio signal that you want to send to the other side. And what you then do with amplitude modulation is you adjust the amplitude with the input signal. And the receiver will then take this signal and will demodulate this back into the original audio signal. The nice thing about amplitude modulation is that it's really easy to do, so you can do it with cheaper equipment, but it's susceptible to interference. Um, interference can easily ruin AM communications. For example, a lightning strike might change the amplitude of a signal at a certain frequency, which is immediately detectable by the receiver, and you will hear it on the radio. So it's cheap and easy to do, but interference is a problem. Another option you have is frequency modulation. So here you modulate based on frequency. By doing this, we can encode an audio signal, for example, into our carrier wave. And then the demodulator, the receiver, will um, convert this modulated carrier wave back into the audio signal. Now this does require more expensive, more complicated equipment to do, but interference is not that big of a deal anymore because if the amplitude of a signal changes, it doesn't really matter, right? The, the receiver doesn't look at the amplitude, it only cares about frequency changes. Let's take a look at digital modulation now. So the idea of digital modulation is that we don't get an audio signal or a sine wave that we need to encode in the carrier. Instead, we get code. So now the idea is that we take zeros and ones or any kind of digit and encode digits, digital information, into our carrier wave. So the first easiest type of digital modulation is ASK, or Amplitude Shift Key Modulation. And what this means is it's basically a digital version of amplitude modulation. But now instead of um, adjusting the amplitude gradually to represent the sine wave, you adjust it uh, using fixed levels to represent bits. So what this means is zero means there is no amplitude, so zero, and one means the amplitude is 100%. So you're basically switching the transmitter on and off to represent the bits of information. That's how simple it is. It's kind of like Morse code, but then for binary. You can also do it with more levels. So you can have ASK with four levels, so you have 100% and 60% and 30% and then also zero. In this case, you can send two bits of data at the same time because two bits of data ha have four possible values. So if you have a four level ASK system, you can send two bits simultaneously. 
And this has the same disadvantage as AM. It's susceptible to interference because it adjusts the amplitude. Then there is also the digital version of FM, which is called FSK, or frequency shift keying. And again, it's the same principle as with FM. We apply slight changes to the frequency to get the information across. But instead of doing it gradually to represent a sine wave of some sort with sound, we do it in steps. So we have uh, fixed frequency changes for different digital values. So in a binary system, we could have a slightly higher frequency meaning a 1 and a slightly lower frequency meaning a 0. But again, with this system, you can also have different levels. So you can have eight levels if you want to. Although, of course, with more levels, it's going to be more difficult to notice the difference for the receiver. There's going to be a lower contrast. So the more levels you have, uh, the more you increase the risk of losing data sometimes. Finally, a very common type of digital modulation is PSK, or phase shift keying. And this is the digital version of phase shift modulation. What this means is we shift the phase of a signal to represent the bits. The simplest form, again here, is binary PSK with just two different uh, values, so it shifts back and forth. But it can go all the way up to 8 PSK, where you have 8 different phases that the signal can have, and you can transfer a lot more data at the same time. Well anyway, there you go. Those were the basics of what modulation is and how it works, and then some of the most common types of modulation that we use in the analog and the digital world. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course, thank you for watching.